Hey there, emotional explorers. It's LaTondra here, your guide on this wild and wonderful journey we call life. Welcome to another episode of the Emotional Freedom Express, brought to you by MixedGreensForTheSoul.com. Today, we're diving into an essential topic, mental health days. That's right, mental health days. All right, guys, so before we get started, you know we have to set our course. So today we're going to navigate four important landmarks on our journey. We're going to talk about the definition of a mental health day, signs that you might need one, the benefits of taking mental health days, and when to consider seeking professional support. Okay, so what exactly is a mental health day? I know, you know, I've used the term before and I've heard people say, oh, I wasn't here yesterday or I couldn't do such and such because I took a mental health day. But I just want to make sure we're all using the same definition of mental health days. And basically, the formal definition is when you take off from your regular responsibilities to focus on your emotional and your psychological wellness. It's definitely a time to recharge, to reflect and to engage in activities that nurture our mental health. So that's the basic definition of a mental health day. So now that we have a working definition for mental health days, I want to back it by a little bit of research. You know, we love big data over here and we found a company or organization called Inner Body Research. They have some pretty uh, interesting data on mental health days. They reviewed uh, the responses from 763 people and found that baby boomers, the people who are ages 57 to 75, are the most likely to take mental health days. So that was a surprise to me. And of course, Gen Z are the least likely to take uh, mental health days. The people over at Interbody Research also found that women, 50% of women, feel it's important to take mental health days as opposed to just 46% of men. Um, taking a mental health day more than doubled the number of people who rated their happiness with a top score. Um, and so, yeah, so those are just some, some quick facts about mental health days. And just a question for you guys, what day do you think people take most often for mental health days? Do you think it's Monday? Do you think it's Friday? Well, again, over at inner body research based on this, um, the study they did of 763 people, those people took Mondays off as their uh, top mental health day, 55%. So thanks to those folks over there for getting those stats for us. Now, before we get into uh, some information and some suggestions and recommendations from our guest experts, I do want to talk a little bit more about mental health days and what are some signs that we should watch out for? Like, how do you know that you actually need a mental health day? A couple of signs are persistent stress. Uh, I realize that everybody is under a tremendous amount of stress. Most of us uh, based on work, uh, family issues, maybe even health issues. And so there are different types of stress that we have to navigate. Um, but if you have that persistent stress, right, it just doesn't go away. You tend to feel, feel excuse me, overwhelmed. Um, that's a sign. If you are just emotionally exhausted, if your brain just can't process information and feelings and you just feel drained or even irritable, that's a sign. Uh, if you have difficulty concentrating, if you're finding it really hard to focus on things that are usually pretty easy for you. Um, and lastly, the physical symptoms. Um, if you're experiencing headaches, fatigue, other signs of stress, please do not ignore those things. Those are signs that you need a mental health day and maybe even some medical or professional help. Um, it reminds me of a story I was talking just, I think it was last week, 
uh, to a woman who was describing this former work experience. It, it ended up being like a work trauma for this woman. And although she hasn't been in the job for several years, just her retelling certain stories, you could I could see her physically becoming agitated and her the tone of her voice changed and she just became flushed and red all over. And I had to stop her. And I said, you know, listen, I say, you're reliving this trauma. And that means that you haven't let go from, you let go of it, you know? Um, and we talked a little bit more and she said, you know what? She says, you're exactly right. She says, and the reason I quit the job is because I had a stroke. And so we talked a little bit more and I really encouraged her to, to let it go. Right. She's had been out of the job for, like I said, several years and, you know, it sounds like she did a good job and whatever happened, happened. Um, you can't go back and relive the past, you know? Uh, and she actually had a doctor's appointment that day. And she says, well, I'm so happy I ran into you because I am going to have to calm down before I go to my doctor. So um, my thoughts and prayers go out to that woman. I hope everything is okay. I hope I see her again. Um, but yeah, so those are some definite signs, some physical signs that um, you need a mental health day. So I think she needed a mental health day that day. And I do want to point out that, you know, we have physical signs, like I said, um, mental signs and other signs. And there are so many benefits to taking a mental health day. It obviously enhances our overall wellness in terms of like giving us time to recharge and reset, as I said before, improving our overall um, mood. But it also helps increase productivity, right? After a break, many people find that they can clearly focus um, and just operate and work at a, at a better um, level and a better pace, a faster pace. Um, it also strengthens our resilience, right? Resilience is one of those things that builds over time and we have to learn to create those, those good habits. And so that's one of the ways to build emotional resilience is to kind of know what the stressors are in your life and how to combat those stressors. Again, our guest expert, one of them is Beth Valdez, one of the co-authors of the Sticky Note Mantras. And um, Beth and her partner, they really advocate being able to create healthy habits through creating mantras or uh, quotes. Some people use... Um, you know, lyrics from their favorite songs. But one of the examples um, is a Motivational Monday where they have uh, pre-made sticky notes or things that you can do for yourself. And it says, you have to do the work to get the results. So it's just a quick little cute reminder that is literally written on a sticky note that kind of provides you with some inspiration. And again, sometimes you can think of those on your own, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's nice just to have a book or a container full of information that you can just pull from. Now, obviously, if you're feeling overwhelmed for an extended period of time, if you're having uh, thoughts of self-harm or hopelessness, if this whatever funk you're in, if it impacts your daily functioning, those are all really good signs that you need to seek professional help. And you've heard me say many times on this podcast and videos and other things that it's much better to have a therapist uh, on call or to have someone that you've already vetted before you need them, as opposed to looking for help when you're in crisis. And as we all know, good get therapists are often, um, you know, they have waiting lists and things like that. So have a, a list of folks that you can count on, uh, professional therapists and doctors, and um, possibly have more than one just in case somebody's not available. <laughs> All right, guys, so this was a really quick episode, uh, but these episodes are meant to be um, pretty succinct and something that you can list to, listen to, uh, you know, between uh, duties and tasks on your way to and fro. And so hopefully this was helpful uh, for you. Again, remember that mental health days are essential and 
remember what to look out for and know the signs when you need extra help and support. And don't forget, reaching out is a sign of strength. It's not a weakness at all, right? When we learn to prioritize our mental health and seek professional guidance, that is sometimes the first step to our emotional freedom journey. All right, so as I wrap up this journey today on Mental Health Days, let's remember a few key takeaways. The first thing is define your mental health day. What are you going to do on the day? Why are you taking the day? Secondly, recognize the signs that you need a mental health day. Uh, appreciate the benefits they offer and just know when to seek again professional support. I thank you guys for tuning into this episode of the Emotional Freedom Express. If you have enjoyed today's discussion, some of the insights, please uh, subscribe, leave a review, share with somebody else who may benefit. Until next time, take care of yourselves and don't forget to embrace those mental health days. All right, guys, see you next time. Thank mm-hmm. you.